One man's greed for seafood lands him in hot water. Why have you got so many and they're so small? Fishery officers deal with disrespectful you youth. You take this off me. Turn your attitude down. And the Air Force make a mercy dash to a stricken yacht. Short of us thinking this is pretty bad. Anoda Bay on the East Cape is a hotbed for illegal fishing activity. Ministry for Primary Industries officers are on the lookout for anyone not playing by the rules. This is a notorious poaching spot. If resident poachers, they probably pretty much don't do anything else but poach. They're not very good at it, mind you, because we've caught them about four or five times, but, you know, if every day they're going out, they're getting a fair bit. The team are leaving nothing to chance, and officers hidden along the beach are keeping the area under tight watch. OK, we've got Cook's identified a boat that's working off the island, and he reckons that they're gearing up to come in pretty shortly. So we've got him keeping an eye on things, and we'll just try and see if we can pick up the boat from up here. I have to sneak a bit lower. We'll try and keep a little bit discreet. Yeah, I reckon come down, bro. As the boat heads for shore, Grant and Martin are called in to check the catch. Yeah, Roger. Uh, we're just going to go down and intercept these guys. You keep an eye on the van. Come on here. Yeah. Ministry of Prime Industries, fishery officers. Yep. Just doing a check. Yep. You got anything on board? Hey, what do you got? OK. I'll meet you by the boat. The man has admitted he's taken heaps. Martin is eager to check the boat, while Grant questions the man about his catch. Hey, oh, Are you? Are you a local? Where are you from? Oh, you're just up here for the weekend? Yeah. So when you say you're what have you got? Just craze or...? Do you know the legal limits for crazy in it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. The daily limit per person is 10 power and 6 crayfish, so a heap of craze is no understatement. It's quite heavy. And once Martin checks the sack, it's also the small size of the species that's disturbing. A lot of small cray. We got them cold, mate, yeah. didn't we? Would you estimate how many crays you got in there? Food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is there some powers in the bottom too, eh? Yep. How many of those you got? Probably 20 something. Right. So, why have you got so many and they're so small? Been greedy, bro. Been greedy. Yeah, hungry over and He's actually taking responsibility for the entire catch, which means um, he's going to be well in excess of his cray and probably power. An explanation he actually said he's just been a bit greedy. So he's been pretty honest and upfront about it, but um, there are consequences if you take this much seafood. We're going to have to have a, have a count up, see how much we've got, and see um, where we go from there. The crew of the Royal New Zealand Air Force's Orion is on a search and rescue mission after the 40-foot yacht Windigo, battered by a tropical storm, activated its distress beacon. Uh, this vessel was located yesterday by this aircraft with a different crew. Uh, they've been in essentially storm conditions. They've been rolled and two of these portholes up the top have been stoved in. So they're taking on water, they've lost steering, they've lost power and their bilge pump is intermittent. So the vessel's in a pretty bad way. Short of us thinking this is pretty bad. The stricken yacht rolled heavily before righting itself and it's taking on water. It's been 36 hours since the emergency beacon was activated, 700 kilometres southwest of Tonga. We've got two possibly seriously injured people on board. If the vessel does sink, they'll be in an awful lot of trouble. Being well out of flying range of any helicopters makes an airlift impossible. The crew of Orion need to locate, contact and redirect any nearby vessels to the Windigo to effect a rescue. So our priority is to get a rescue vessel to this ship as quickly as possible, preferably a large one. The Orion has made contact with a nearby yacht Adventure Bound and tasked them to reach Windigo as soon as possible in case the stricken yacht should sink. Copy that, QE Rescue. Adventure Bound on the side. But in these dangerous conditions, the crew believe a much larger vessel is needed for a safe rescue. So we're searching uh, for other rescue vessels. It's not long till the radar picks up a ship that could be big enough to help. Yeah, 
this, I, this guy looks useful. Okay. He's not responding to VHF, but they may have something else. Uh, we've picked up on radar this contact here, radar contact 9, and we've managed to identify them as a cargo vessel. They're presently tracking northwest, and uh, we're trying to get them to divert to the sailing vessel in distress. Merchant Cheng 2 is by far our best hope. Uh, they are a nice big vessel, and they are able to make headway even in this horrible weather. After several tries, Cheng 2 finally responds to contact. Go ahead, uh, Cheng 2. Cheng 2, this is a Kiwi Rescue. Request you contact Rescue Coordination Centre New Zealand. They're contacting RCC New Zealand at the moment, who will give them instructions on how they can assist the sailing vessel while we continue on. With the potential rescue vessel steaming ahead on a 10-hour journey, Orion flies further north to relieve the French Air Force who have been circling Windigo. Uh, at the moment, there's a French rescue aircraft on task. Uh, they've got one hour's fuel left. They soon have the stricken sailboat in their sights and make contact with them. New Zealand, Orion, this is FY Windigo. Hey, thank goodness the Kiwis have come through. Can you please tell us what you can do for us because we are really desperate now? Wendigo, this is a Kiwi Rescue. Uh, we have diverted a merchant ship to your location and they are making best speed. Additionally, the sailing yacht Venture is on their way. Venture will be here in approximately five hours. OK, concerned. Negative, negative. We are seriously, seriously concerned about the safety to us and them trying to get us on board their sailing yacht. Okay, we've got um, 45 crayfish or 17 power, so the guy taking responsibility of this is in serious non-commercial offending. So Grant's speaking with him, but we'll get off the beach and he can have an opportunity to measure them and we'll educate him as required. The man has well over his daily limit and it looks like most of his catch is well under the legal size. Yep. OK, 118, 107, 112, 112. So that's all the power, so it should be 2, 4, 6, 8, 15 under, 2 legal. So 17, so 15 yep. undersize? Yep. Female undersize. Female undersize. Female undersize. As well as a tiny soft shell cray, the majority of the catch is undersized female crayfish, key for the continued breeding of the species. Look at that one. It's, cool. it's half, oh, the half the size. Taking any size soft shell is strictly forbidden. What was the count there? So 18 power? Yeah. 42, 43, 44, 45. Yeah, 45. There's 45 crayfish in total. They're all undersized, and we had one um, crayfish soft shell, and uh, it was also unmeasurable because the tip of the spine was broken. And then we had the power quantity, which is one legal, and it was a total of 18 power. Yeah. While the man seems remorseful, his lapse of judgment has been very costly for the local marine life, and maybe for him personally. He's going to end up in court for excess undersized uh, seafood. Doesn't know it yet, but the boat might come with us. All of this is seized. And it's seized under the Fisheries Act. Yeah, it's just where to from here? For, for, for you, just so you know, we really appreciate you being good about it. The thing is, you've got to be aware of if, if you weren't good about it, the boat, the motor, the wetsuits, everything can actually be seized because you're in, you're in the category where everything can go. It's a lucky break for the man. His honesty means he won't lose his boat, but his excessive catch means a date in court awaits him. All of the power and crayfish will return to the sea. Man, that was some small crayfish, though. I haven't seen that small for a while, actually. As Grant and Martin head back down the coast to Gisborne, an 0804 poacher call comes in about a group of boys acting suspiciously. Just dropped some sacks around there. They're probably going to be juveniles, though, so... Hey, bro, we're going to go back and see those sacks that you dropped. Seven hundred kilometres southwest of Tonga, the crew of the Royal New Zealand Air Force's Orion is coordinating the rescue of a stricken sailboat 
after it was rolled by huge seas. The uh, sailing yacht Venture is on their way and they will be able to pull you off your yacht. Over. But the injured sailors are worried about the plan. Negative, negative. We know the boat, um, Venture, and we know the conditions here. We are seriously, seriously concerned about the ability and the safety to us and them trying to get us on board their sailing yacht. The crew are concerned. All Flight Lieutenant Stephen Graham can do is try to reassure them. This is a Kiwi Rescue. That is why I have contacted the Ching Tu. She is a large merchant vessel. Uh, she is further away, but if you are able to stay on your vessel for 10 more hours, they will be able to effect a rescue. Over. Um, 10 hours. Seriously taking water, we've got no power. We're, we're a wreck. Roger. Uh, we will do all we can to get vessels to you as soon as possible and get you rescued. Over. The situation appears dire. The boat is still taking on water and they need more supplies. Ten hours to rescue may be too late. Can we please drop as many life rafts as possible? We have had unsuccessful attempts with, um, this morning and they were miles away. Roger, I have two life rafts and I have every intention to use them if required. Over. The yacht's up and down, coping with these eight metre swells, white caps. We throw in a life raft next to it, they have to come up on deck on the exposed deck, which is quite dangerous in itself, and water washing over the deck of the vessel, and moving up and down, moving away from the vessel, being pushed around with the swell, very quite difficult. With the dangerous conditions and already failed attempts, the crew feel it's virtually impossible to get a life raft safely to the Windigo. They're prepared to try if the situation deteriorates further. We are running very low on power, we are quite concerned. If we require the drop, we will confirm positioning with you prior to the drop. Over. We're going now to conserve power to starboard back cabin, which is where we have built a secure pad. As the sailors bunker down, Flight Lieutenant Stephen Graham and the crew prepare for the worst. At any time, abandoning your ship is at your discretion. We will support you in your actions. Out. It appears the boys may have spotted the officers and tried stashing their catch in nearby bush. We're going to go back and see those sacks that you dropped. We're going to go and have a look at them, okay? So give me just back at those sacks, all of you, okay? Okay, bro? How old do you reckon they are? The young lads aren't happy their day has been interrupted and show no respect for the officers. So we're just going to check. <laughs> They're just, they're just turn your attitude down. Don't be silly. Now you want to just come over to your sacks? Come over to your sacks. Look at the little story you got. And by the look of what's in the sacks, they also have no respect for marine life. Okay, this, this here is ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, have a look, because you guys need to be educated, yep. because you guys are our future, OK? <laughs> come have a look. That's ridiculous. The legal size is out here somewhere. No, that's not on. The power isn't even half the legal size of 125 millimetres. You guys are a bit old, you'd be going to court. Big fine. Yes. Are we getting fine? No. Nah. This stage, because you're your age, you are. It's, it's warning. Hey, guys, it's warning education. And that's how we deal with it. But take that size, they don't have a chance to breed. And once you start taking that size, then you're basically ruining your next generation of power stocks, which affects everyone in Tolaga Bay. Your kaitiaki here, one is doing what we're doing, but when you're doing recreational fishing, you've got to stick with the limits. Power are all way undersized, <laughs> not even close. So everything, just so you know, everything that we've got here in relation to the legal power and crayfish of seas, the kinner, no problem with your kinner. So you're probably safe if you're going out rock hopping, just go and take your kinner, you're allowed to 50 per person, but you're not going to get legal sized power generally, even around here if you're rock hopping. OK, yeah. This is an isolated area again. They don't see a lot of people like us. You know, they take that amount of undersized 
power, which is pretty unacceptable. Hopefully we've got our message across. I mean, the main thing when they're that age, I mean, 14, we can't actually do anything. They've got to be 17 for us to, to actually take any affirmative action. So for, you know, for guys that age, it's all about education. While it's been a productive day for the officers, it's always disappointing to see abuse of marine life. The boys received a warning and an educational visit was set up with a local school. The man with excess and undersized power and crayfish pleaded guilty and was fined $1,900 plus $520 in court costs. Over the South Pacific, the crew of the Royal New Zealand Air Force's Orion is providing a vital communication link in the rescue coordination of the stricken yacht Windigo. He's taken on water, there's holes in the starboard side, so every time she listens to the starboard, takes on water. But she's obviously very concerned, rightly so. The yacht crew has endured 36 hours at the mercy of the stormy seas, but time could be running out for the injured sailors. The boat could be reaching breaking point. So our options at the moment are to drop a life raft, uh, and in these conditions that's going to be dangerous, but certainly better to do it in the daylight. Uh, we've also got the adventure bound about three hours out, and then the merchant vessel uh, about 10 hours out. Of course, the best option is the one that's furthest away at the moment. Let me go, this is a Kiwi Rescue. Hello, Kiwi Rescue. Can, can you please recommend what you think we should do? And if we do go for the bigger ship option, what is the procedure and what is the safe way? OK, I must stress that I, I cannot give you any direct recommendation. Any decision is always up to the captain of the ship. If we do attempt either a life raft drop or a transfer to another yacht that will be highly dangerous. If you are able to wait until the Ching 2 arrives, she will be able to sit up sea of you and create a slick which will reduce the risk and there will also have been more time passed and the conditions are projected to improve. Over. With the Cheng 2 still eight hours away, there is little the Air Force crew can do but circle and offer moral support. Tanya and Stephen, just hang in there. Over. After a further three hours, the Orion's fuel levels reach their limit and Kiwi Rescue reluctantly prepare to head for base. 900 pounds, Bingo. With the sun beginning to set, the crew get ready to drop flares to guide the French Air Force back yeah. to the scene. My aircraft carries air droppable flares which float and they burn for about 45 minutes so that should cover easily any gap before the French get here and uh, should lead them on visually to your location. Over. 3,000 yards is the left of the nose. OK, so my drop, drop now, now, now. Thank you so much for your support. You've done a brilliant, brilliant job. Kiwi Rescue, out. With the flares safely deployed, the Orion heads for New Zealand. We've managed to vector in the adventure bound. They are now in visual contact. The situation now appears reasonably stable and I'm confident that they're going to make it through the night and then we can have them rescued tomorrow morning when it's calm, when it's light, light and when it's going to be much safer. Despite continued high seas, the following morning, under the watchful eye of another Orion crew, the container ship Ching 2 made a daring rescue. At different times, we both felt scared, seriously scared. And then the other person would say, hey, no, it's going to be okay, we're going to get through this. Both injured crew members were winched to safety aboard the ship where they were later transferred to the Navy's HMNZ Otago. Glad to be alive. And that is the most important thing, is the people that brought us a second chance and a future together. The wreck of the Windigo washed ashore on a remote island three months later.